Amen and praise God. Welcome to the first edition of Time Out with Tony Dyson. And of course, this is Tony Dyson. I am blessed to be here. And I am honored and thankful that God allowed me to come up with this to help someone in, out, through, or past their current situation or situations to come. Amen. On this evening, we're going to talk about God's power and us allowing his power to empower us to change our situation. Amen. We're going to go ahead and jump right into this thing so I don't bore you. Amen. Genesis 126 states, And God said, Let us make man in our image, after our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the earth, and over the cattle, and over all the earth, and every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. Then if you look at Genesis 127, it states, Male and female created he them, and he bless them so we are a blessed people amen we are blessed no matter what situation that we're in you may be sitting there to yourself saying right now when well, he don't know my situation but we are blessed because god said so when he made us amen i'm just going to talk today today about letting god empower us letting his power that he gave us let us work and push through our situation we're going to talk about a young lady named Sarah. To make a long story short, Sarah later became Sarah, who bare a child at 90 years old. Amen. And her husband, Abraham, who, who was later Abraham, amen, God told him of this thing. Now, Sarah, she did want a child, but she was barren, especially at her old age. Amen. But God still blessed her. See, if you go over to Genesis, uh, the stories in 17 and 18 of the book of Genesis, even over in 18, it's around verse 9, Sarah heard Abraham talking to some more men about her being to become pregnant. And she laughed at the situation. Amen. And the Holy Spirit told Abraham that she laughed. And when Abraham confronted her about the situation, she lied about it. So, people of God, what I'm saying is, is that a lot of times we may not know what's going on in our situation, but the Holy Spirit does. And you never know what plan God has for you. So you never count God out. I urge you to read that story to see who the son was and what happened. Amen. As we move on to Genesis chapter 30, we're going to talk a, a minute or two about a young man named Joseph. Now, Joseph was, I believe, the youngest brother, and his brothers despised him. They hated him for what reason? Jealousy. So they dug a ditch and put him in a ditch. But before they put him in a the ditch, they took his coat that he had. As they put him in this ditch, they took his coat and they dipped it in blood. When they went back home, they told the parents that he was probably maimed and killed by a wild beast. Joseph was actually sold into slavery. Amen. His brother sold him. And people of God, we just got to know sometimes that our family and friends are the first ones to put us into a bad situation. Our family and friends not always do have, do they have the best interests of God and us in mind. See, a lot of times our family and friends try to push us out the way to think that they're going to move up that, to that rung on the ladder. But to make a long story short, the story is in Genesis uh, chapter 30 through, through chapter 45. I know it's long, but there's meaning. What ended up happening was, even though Joseph had been sold into slavery, it came a point in time where Pharaoh was having dreams. And Joseph ended up being the only one that could interpret Pharaoh's dreams. So he found, he found favor in the eyes of Pharaoh. Amen. And a famine came upon the land. So his brothers, the same ones who had sold him and pretty much didn't care about him, came to Egypt for corn. Little did they know that Joseph was the one that ended up feeding them. He recognized them, but he didn't reckon, but they did not recognize him. And he ended up revealing himself later on. And I urge you to read that to further show who he went on to be. Amen. 
Last and not least, we're going to talk about a man named Saul. Saul pops up in the New Testament in the book of Acts, right around chapter 7. Amen. Paul was one of the Christian crusading people. He was crucifying Christians. He was killing Christians. Paul was actually from Rome. Amen. And he was brought up under another teaching over in Acts 9 and 1. It shows where he openly threatened the disciples. That he openly threatened to kill them. And he sought out to destroy them and to destroy Christians and Christianity. On one trip, he was on his way to Damascus and he heard a voice. The voice said, Paul, oh, I'm sorry, Saul, why thou persecutest me? And he knew that it was the voice of the Lord. And Saul answered back, Lord, where art thou? There was a bright light which blinded Paul. Well, I'm sorry, <laughs> Saul, for three days. Even the men that were with him on this trip heard the voice. He had to be hand-led into Damascus, where he ended up following the orders of the Lord, filled with the Holy Spirit. And being one of the most iconic, powerful people in the New Testament. People of God, what I'm saying right now is, God can change your situation. If you allow him, move closer to him and hearken to his voice. No matter what people do to you, know that you have the Lord on your side. Amen. No matter what people say to you. If you're changing your life and people say, oh, well, you used to do this with me. You used to do that with me. Just let them know. No offense to you, but I'm trying to better me. Amen. I'm trying to better yourself. Amen. People may say, well, you used to be this. You used to be that. But just thank God that they're saying you used to be that I am, I am not now. I'm a new person. For all my sins are wiped away, washed away. For his stripes, I am healed. Amen. Always remember, life and death are in the power of the tongue. And if you ask the Father for something, and you have faith, and you believe in your heart, it shall be given to you. But there are rules and principles that you do have to follow. Until next time, God bless you. God keep you. And also, I am taking emails and questions and video messages, all that good stuff, to continue on. So until next time, if the good Lord says the same, May he line your path with blessings to help you on your journey and people to strengthen you. God bless you and God keep you. Amen. And thank you.